Back at the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Much to talk about here today, and we'll begin with this. SmackDown's Roman Reigns will be on hand when Raw comes to Long Island, New York next month. UBS Arena has announced that Reigns will be appearing at the Monday, November 29 edition of Raw in Long Island. Episode will be WWE's first show at the UBS Arena. Venue opens Saturday, November 20th, home to the NHL's New York Islanders. Of course, if you've been paying attention, there was a draft recently, and uh, it was announced that uh, the draft would go into effect after the Crown Jewel show, which is coming up here a week from tomorrow. And in addition to that, we know that Survivor Series is coming, in November, and for Survivor Series, it's always brand versus brand. So that means that the draft will go into effect, but we're still going to see everybody on every show leading to Survivor Series. But after Survivor Series, everybody is supposed to be on their own show at that point. Otherwise, what's even the point of the draft? What's the point of the draft is the big question, but anyway... And this November 29th show is after Survivor Series. They're sending Roman Reigns from SmackDown to Raw. Now, granted, I would guess he's not going to be on television. It's probably going to be for the dark match for the fans that go to the Raw show at the UBS Arena. But uh, why, you may ask, is Roman Reigns going to Raw on November 29th? Well, the answer is because Raw is in the UBS Arena November 29th, and... uh, Nine days later, AEW is in the same UBS arena for Dynamite. Eight days apart, nine days apart. Well, at this point, for those of you wondering, Raw is being mutilated by AEW. At this point, Raw has distributed 2,800 tickets for their UBS arena show. Rampage has distributed... 7,536 tickets, according to WrestleTix.com. So almost three times as many tickets have been sold for the Dynamite show, as I try not to sneeze. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, he's doing so well right there. (laughs) Basically, three times the number of tickets have been sold to the AW show as to the WWE show. So now we're dipping into, we got to send Roman Reigns, sell some tickets. Well, since they made that announcement, they have sold tickets, everyone. They have sold 100 tickets to the Raw show since they announced that Roman Reigns would be on the show. So for whatever reason, you know, the sets and all, uh, Raw is set up for uh, 7,200. So AW has already sold more tickets than WWE has been set up for. And AEW is set up for ninety six and ninety nine. AEW is seventy eight percent full with their capacity. If you're going by WWE's capacity, they're over one hundred percent full, and uh, WWE is currently thirty nine percent full of a more limited capacity. So anyway, that's the story. I know people will get angry at that. And you know what they'll do, Mike? They will accuse me of being paid by AEW. Perhaps those people that would accuse me of that should listen to the next story here. Or perhaps oh. when I'm done, you will say I am paid by WWE because you're a peanut brain. <laughs> Raw on Monday night. Raw did a, a 1.58 million viewers and a .42 rating in 1849. It was the lowest audience for Raw since the July 5 holiday show which was before WWE's return to touring. In both total viewers in 18 to 49, it was among the lowest in the show's 23-year history. It was Raw's lowest first hour in history, with 1.59 million viewers and a .39 in 18 to 49. Now, obviously they had competition. Indianapolis Colts versus Baltimore Ravens NFL game did 11.33 million viewers and a 3.49 in 18 to 49. San Francisco Giants versus LA Dodgers playoff game, 3.55 million viewers in a 0.92. 
And the Red Sox versus the Rays, 3.30 million viewers and an 0.77. I'm still laughing at a 3.49 at 18 to 49. Now, why do I bring all this up? And actually, it was interesting because the first hour of Raw did 1.59. Second hour did 1.64, which is a, a sizable increase, actually. And then dropped to 1.52 million for the third hour. Well, I was I was having a discussion on our, our uh, delightful message board the other day, which actually has been much more delightful of late, I might add. But we've still got, you know, some folks. But this was not trolling. This was, this was a person who is a fan of AEW as I am as well, and they were very angry that I and Dave would have the temerity to say that one of the issues with Rampage this week was that people weren't interested in the lineup, which is what I said. I like, listen, don't get me wrong, I liked the show, I liked the matches, but it was a show where when I saw the lineup, I thought, you know what? This is not a show that I need to watch live. I can watch it the next day. Now, of course, you know, N equals one. I'm one person. Okay, that's fine. But this person, a few of them actually, were outraged. But I would have the temerity to say that this was anything other than sports competition. Why are you being unfair, Brian? Why why is it sports competition for Dynamite and for Raw and for SmackDown? Uh, but but for Rampage, it had to be the lineup. Well, I'll explain to you why. Obviously, Rampage was affected by sports competition as well. It would be foolish to say otherwise. It absolutely was, okay? But it was also the lineup, more so than for Raw, and I know that because there's never a lineup for Raw, Dynamite and SmackDown, and there's also never a lineup for SmackDown. AEW fans, they will choose whether to watch a show live based on the lineup this is not just me saying this okay this has happened many many times do you know who else believes this by the way you ever notice how you know there's like an angle on raw and like the angle's stupid but people want to defend it because they love the people involved and they want to support wwe but they don't understand that the wrestlers involved usually also think that it's a really stupid angle and they're upset about it the number one guy who will tell you that whether Rampage or AEW do well or not is largely predicated, besides sports competition, but also on the lineup, is Tony Khan! Raw, NXT, SmackDown, and Rampage. All four of them faced strong competition from various sports last week. Okay? Raw... SmackDown, and NXT all showed a decline of between 15 and 20% in 18 to 49. Meanwhile, on Rampage, their decline in 18 to 49 was 32%. So, in fact, it would be unfair for me to say that it had nothing to do with the matches announced in advance. It was only sports. Because, in fact, Rampage was an outlier by almost double. Brandon Thurston had the quarter hours for the Rampage show. And uh, many times, if you look at the quarter hours, in fact, like the vast majority of times, with or without sports competition, the quarter hour ratings for Rampage or Dynamite are largely very steady with some ups and downs. Do you know the quarter hours were for the Rampage show on Friday night? They were up here, and they went like this. Last week, they were here, and they went like this. So the fact of the matter is, whether it was a blow-off of a long storyline or not, the fact of the matter is the AEW viewers were not interested in the Brian Cage street fight with Ricky Starks. If you want to get mad at me, that's fine. But that's what happened. They were interested in the CM Punk match at the opening of the show. And then the show fell and fell and fell and fell and fell. How that's going to affect Friday, I guess we'll find out. We can look at the lineup when we come back from the break. Talk about that in SmackDown. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.